are playing catch up to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, the Super Bowl, the, the defending Super Bowl champs. They were eleven and five in the regular season, uh, but Tory. They signed all 22 starters back. Antonio Brown is back. Uh, Ju- Julian Edelman is reportedly coming down to Tampa Bay as Bay, Bay as well. So the rich are getting richer here. So they they still had some draft picks. So with that being said, who was their best overall draft pick this year? Mm. Pretty tough to pick out a best one when all you're doing is picking backups. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty much. Um, I'll go with – uh. I'll go with Robert Haney though out of out of Notre Dame. Um, he's got he's very versatile. He can play almost any spot on the line. Um, you know he's got really great hand technique. He's good for good in the short area. Good short burst quickness on him. Um, he does does get caught getting gets caught flat footed and can get rocked back. Um, you you know as soon as the, as soon as the lineman does that, like they're they're pretty easy to knock off balance. Um, he does got to work on that as well, but there again, it's it's tough to say because it was all literally backups that you drafted. Yeah. Not one person is going to be expected to come in and set the world on fire for them. Yeah the the only place the only place where I can see a where they might expect somebody to step in like you know do play consecutive minutes is that offensive tackle from Notre Dame, Robert Hainsey, that they drafted in the third round. Because I believe they are fairly thin on the offensive line. Jensen uh, had some back a back surgery this offseason, if I'm not mistaken. Their uh, their uh, their uh, center, the long, ginger haired looking kid. But the best pick that the Tampa Bay Buccaneers have is their quarterback. They they drafted Kyle Trask second round, 64th over like oh like oh overall. I've been kind of high on 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 Kyle Trask. All through the college season, yes, he had a horrible bowl game. People are banking on that horrible, horrible bowl game, the horrible pro day. But go back and watch the film. Kyle Trash, I believe he beat the SEC all touchdown record in a s- season. You know, he. T- I could he, do that throwing to Kyle Pitts. But still, but uh, there were other people throwing through Kyle Pitts too because this is Kyle Trash's first year as a starter. Kyle Pitts started last year and didn't have these kind of. But kind of what was Trask's numbers. completion percentage this year? Uh, it, it was under seventy, if I'm not mistaken. Like his complete his his completion percentage wasn't good. But either but either was Patrick Pat 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 Patrick Mahomes when he was in college. Either you know it's like drink. I, I, you gotta do what you gotta do. But Kyle Trash has an opportunity to sit behind Tom Brady for the next two or three seasons. Byron Lethwich is 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 really starting to explode as a great offensive coordinator, as a great offensive mind. You know, and he's and Byron Lethwich is learning from Tom Brady too. So, when you get an opportunity to sit behind a great quarterback, i.e., your boy Aaron Rodgers sat behind Brett Favre for what three or four, three or four years. He he came in the league and he lit the world on fire. I can see Kyle Trask doing the same thing. This this is a great draft pick by the uh, Tampa Bay Buccaneers because. For one, they needed a backup, and two, this guy is—he is, is going to do great, great things. So, on the flip side of that, Tory, who was their worst pick? So, I'm going to go right back to Kyle Trask because I think Todd Kyle Trask oh, was their worst pick. So, I am not a Kyle Trask fan. I have not hid that at all. I think he's too inaccurate. I don't think he's that good of a quarterback. I think the talent on the Florida Gator team made him look way better than he is. Um. I do not see his game translating for to the NFL. He's got average arm strength. He's got average athleticism. He's not, he nothing jumps off the board at him and you're, he's not accurate. So therefore in the NFL, I think he's going to throw a lot of interceptions when he does get the play. So um, I am not a fan of that pick. I, if they would have been a third round pick, I'd have been like, okay. Okay. You well, know, granted they took him with the last pick, last pick in the second round. But, right. So, um, so you know who else threw a lot of interceptions at Tampa Bay? Winston, Trent right? Dilfer. Winston. Winston James threw Winston. what thirty interceptions, but he also threw thirty-five touchdowns. He also threw over five thousand yards that particular season as well. With that, how many being, games did they win in the playoffs? Uh, zero. Uh, but with but with that being said, that same exact Winston, that same exact guy that threw those thirty interceptions and thirty-five touchdowns. Brandon B.C. Combs says he is a top 10 quarterback in all of NFL. 
So it's because Brandon's a Bears fan and has brain damage. What you got to do, you got to think like Combs here. You got to put your hand over the interception numbers and look at the 35 touchdowns and look at the 5,000 uh, y- yards that he threw through for. Kyle Trask is 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 going to be just fine. So my worst pick for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers is this wide receiver from North Texans. Uh, I don't know who he is. I, I haven't watched any film on him. Uh, he is 5'9", 160 pounds. The couple highlights tapes that I saw of him, I was not impressed. And if you are not impressed from a highlight tape, you, know, you did something wrong. Like I, I, So this fourth-round pick, 129th overall as a, a receiver, I felt like was kind of of, of a stretch because they are – I think that's probably the deepest spot that they're at because they got what they got Godwin, Evan, Antonio Brown, uh, Scotty, uh, the what's his last name? Scotty doesn't know Miller. Yeah, Scotty Miller. Uh, Julian Edelman is 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 reportedly coming down to Tampa. So to draft a receiver, I think you just drafted him to get cut. To be honest, maybe he ends up on the practice squad. Like I don't know, but. That's that was kind of of a reach because you can only you know roster fifty two two guys and you and you, and you already have six receivers. Like, are you going to cut Antonio Brown? Are you going to cut Mike Mike Evans? So of those five receivers that I named, who are you going to cut? The rookie, right? Antonio Brown. No, you're not. <laughs> you are not going to cut Antonio Brown. Tom Brady will have a heyday with that. So well, the thing is though, is he 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 is a gadget type player though. You know, so not that. Arians runs a ton of gadget plays, but well, mostly because Brady's calling the <laughs> offensive plays. <Yeah>. So, <laughs> right. So, what grade do you give the Tampa Bay Buccaneers draft? Uh, I give them a C. a C. Nothing great. Nothing, you no, know, nothing terrible. Like they drafted backups. They drafted for potential need. They drafted for right. the future. I mean, it's a amazing position to be in when you don't have to reach or fill a need wherever. <laughs> wherever you think you got to go. So you can literally, they could draft best player available at that point. And that's what, that's kind of what they did. Yeah. And with except that, for Trask, oh, come on, man. It was so with that being said, since they drafted the best, best available player, more or less on the board, I got to kind of give them a B plus because you can't go wrong when you're drafting, you're drafting the best available player on the board. You know, it's just, you are adding depth to your position. You are, you're, you're getting your team better for next year like less let's say who is that linebacker that locked or that uh that uh cornerback that locked down tyree kill all super bowl long um let's say he gets a sprained ankle week three uh byu quarterback chris wilcox seventh rounder can step in for a few if step up for a few few games and they're probably not going to miss a miss a beat so well, but there again, when you have that much talent on a team like that, yeah. it's easy to cover up one person. Right, you just start moving to zone coverage and hide him as much as you can. So, so with so with, <laughs> so like with that being said, Wyatt Williams drink, they get a B plus in him, <laughs> B plus in my book. 